Yo guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at Mac, the powerhouse, the paladin, the sword wielding tank that will be making a major change to the meta. And of course, we've got some fantastic footage of this new rogue for you. I played a few games as him. I loaded into a couple of customs with him as well. And I've also played a lot of games with him on my team. So I'm going to give you a rundown of what I think of him and show you some clips of what kind of damage this guy can do. If you do end up liking the video, then please give it a like and do subscribe as well if it's something you've been meaning to do. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into the action for you. Cool. So the first thing that I want to speak about is Mac's weapon, the Conviction, the 50 round mag up to 70 round mag LMG that increases accuracy as you fire. Now, my worries were going to be that the starting reticle was going to be too big and you're going to miss the first few shots before it gets to a nice tight spread. To be honest, with this gun, it's not too bad. The reticle starts reasonably big, but it shrinks down to a very powerful accuracy pretty quickly. At medium ranges, where this gun really excels, it hits 21 damage per shot. So you're able to five bullet people with a seven fire rate. Under a second time to kill, and that is definitely possible with this weapon. At closer ranges, this gun uh, is a little bit harder to use. Normally when hip firing, you have that inaccuracy to help you out when you're tracking close, fast moving targets. With Mac, it is entirely possible to be too accurate with the hip fire. If you do manage to hit just four shots on most enemies, they're dead, which is very powerful in the current meta. However, when comparing this gun to other assault rifles and LMGs that will be out with this next patch, it's good still, but it's not crazy, crazy good like it sounds. I will be making a video soon on the patch notes from this PTS, just so that you can understand exactly what these changes are going to be. There's a lot of real technical nitty gritty stuff that I don't want to get into too much on this video. If you do want to see that, make sure you subscribe. If the video is already released, I'll put a little card for it up here so you guys can check that out. But for comparison, Seeker's AR will do 25 body damage at close range as well. And the KA-30 is getting buffed to 23 body damage. Now, this gun gets pretty weird when you get to typical long ranges. It feels very strange to beam someone with consistent shots from long ranges whilst hip firing. But it's entirely possible with this weapon. Of course, ADS is very accurate as well. But at those longer ranges, the reticle is generally too big to get the first one, two, maybe three shots on the enemy. The recoil on this gun is pretty manageable. It does go up a bit but not too much and with the bloom being so tight it is going to be all about recoil control there are going to be a couple people that get really good at bringing that barrel down and they're going to completely destroy lobbies with them so his gun overall is very very strong i would put it above the mlx more in terms of power i think Anvil's gun has quite a lot of bloom, so even at mid-ranges, it's possible to miss a few shots in a gunfight. Mac doesn't really have that issue. He misses the first one, two, or three, and then it's all up to your accuracy. You've seen some of the clips going on in the background. Let me know. Do you think the Conviction is stronger than the MLX more, or is Anvil still going to have the edge when everyone's out of utility? Max, next gun is the Objection. This is a gun that we've seen on Dahlia for a while. Uh, very powerful. It is getting a body shot buff, and it is an absolute laser beam now. But we've seen the objection before, so let's get on to Max's other bits of kit. His frag grenade performs really well, of course. It still has 150 damage, fully upgraded. It's still cookable, which I'm a big fan of. However, tenacity has been buffed. It is now eight grand, which is pretty expensive but it goes back to 40% damage reduction. I'm not going to go into too much of the numbers here. That'll be in the next video, but you can survive a fully upgraded grenade with tenacity now, and it is possible to survive a bounce nade from Seeker with tenacity and armor now. But again, we'll get into all that in another video. He, of course, has APS as well, trophy systems, useful as ever. His melee is a lot of fun to use, but it is a lot more difficult. In the update note show that they did on the 23rd, this melee could hit for 75 damage on throw. Uh, it's no longer that, it is 100. It is not upgradable past 100. The swing damage is a beast though. 70 damage for upgrade. Most of the people that I was seeing play Mac did not upgrade the sword to get that damage. It is quite expensive. So the Claymore is really cool, but not the best weapon for effectiveness. 
Then there are max perks. Stalker is a good one on him, seems as as he has an LMG. Berserker is good as well. Reloading while sprinting is fantastic when you have a long reload time. But there is one perk on him that is extremely OP, and I guess it would be, it is Replenish. Now, this works incredibly on strikeout or respawn game modes. I was playing King of the Hill in these clips here, and it was insane. You would get down, fully replenish your mag, you would spray transfer to another target. Uh, whilst you're shooting at the other target, the first guy would bleed out, you replenish your mag, continue shooting, at which point you down the guy that you're shooting at, you go down, spray to another target, this one bleeds out, it's actually crazy. You can shoot forever. So if you want to make people pretty upset on strikeout, play Mac, buy replenish, hold down left click and win. Then we have his abilities. So max passive, standard issue. He gets 25 armor at the start of the round and can only replenish that armor by getting it down. The standard crouch and hold the button does not work on this guy. So it's 25 HP, which given the time to kill has been reduced across the board for almost every weapon, it's not a massive difference when you're taking firefights. Most of the time, this is going to be a survive an unupgraded grenade, survivor semtex type deal. But it is a passive. It sits in the background, does work for you while you go about demolishing the enemy team. And it does a very good job of that. The Dahlia Link is strong. She can survive a fully upgraded bounce grenade from Seeker because she has tenacity and she can link to Mac for armor. So you have two armored players from round one, which as a thought is very powerful for stopping melees and grenades, explosives, early game. His active ability, Light Bomb, is pretty good, but not necessarily for the reason that I thought it was going to be. It is of course very good for holding down a site. The potential to completely ruin an enemy push is huge. On respawn game modes though, I was using it to run away plant it down and stop enemies from following me. If you use it to cover a rotate, you can essentially have a free site set up and get ready before the enemy can push into you. Now it is kind of tricky to get it right with positioning. And of course, if you are all going to be leaving for another site, then you're not able to keep an eye on the light bomb, but the enemy don't know you're doing that. So that was like an unexpected mechanic that came out of testing him on the PTS and could be a reasonable reason to choose Mac on attack as well. Now, there were very few times when I did actually get flashed by this. It is fairly easy to dodge. I think this is much more important as a zoning tool than it is for actually flashing enemies. The area of effect is visible to everyone on the map friendly and enemy. The enemy shows up in red and your friendly shows up in blue. Uh, quite a lot like Killjoy's ultimate from Valorant. Now, one problem with his ultimate is it does block movement. That's gonna be a big problem before you get used to it. I can see some very angry Mac players who tried to roll out of a grenade and ended up rolling into their ultimate and then die. <laughs> So overall, do I see Mac as a replacement for Anvil? No, absolutely, definitely not. I see him complementing Anvil really well, actually. Shield down, light bomb behind the shield, fantastic for holding a sight. Two big high magazine guns capable of holding down a sight really well. I can see comps going with Mac on one site, Anvil on the other, and then a couple of players playing mid or floating around. But let me know, are you gonna buy Mac? If you are, do you think you're gonna main him? If you are, who did you main before? I am super excited to see this road go live. I'm sure you guys are too. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.